Today's topic control of voltage profile. Now before I talk about it, we must understand the power system is broadly divided into three areas, sub areas rather. In fact, four generation, transmission, distribution, and utilization. That is the load because of which there has to be a generation. Now, generation is always done at a lower voltage. At best, you can go 11 kV or even 25 kV. Why? Why can't we generate it 400 kV? Because the that is a transmission line voltage. Then there is no need of transformer. If you can generate it 400, you can transmit it 400 without having the use of transformer. However, when you generate, you have to see what sort of synchronous generator you have. That is the only generator which is used for bulk power generation. Induction generator is used only for renewable energy sources like wind, uh, like mic micro hydel, mini hydel, small hydel. It is never used for generation of big power for variety of reasons. First of all, its speed is not constant it varies with slip that much electrical engineering all of you know. So, synchronous generation uh, is always possible uh, at by synchronous generator at a constant speed. It runs at synchronous speed or it does not run it is 0 1. If it is a 4 pole it is a 1500 rpm. If it is a 6 pole it is a 1000 rpm. So, the if you increase the voltage the problem of cooling and insulation comes in that insulation will not withstand the 400 kV voltage and that is why you go for lower voltage. Then cooling, the heating uh, you know produced has to be cooled, the cooling and heating cycle which you might have learned in your undergraduate utilization of electric energy by Taylor or Star or H. Pratap or whatever book you might have read, whatever book you might have read. I think that is the answer to that question and that is why we go and then naturally we need a transformer because we need to transmit at higher voltage because the transmission line losses gets reduced if the voltage is high the current is low. So, I squared R losses that will get lower down then the conductor size will be lower the moment the current carrying is smaller otherwise you will have to spend huge money in purchasing those big conductors. Now, we come to the topic control of voltage profile. I think we have already talked about it last time and I told you how the two problems are delinked and that is why we had a uh, method called FDLF fast decoupled load flow method. Now, voltage can also be controlled using generators. So, how? By controlling the excitation by adjusting the generator excitation. Now, uh, the control of excitation itself is a big topic. It is given in Kimbark's book if you have heard of Kimbark. There are various types of excitation systems IEEE excitation systems they are given in literature also in books also. These two equations are very important. In fact, they should be CTM. What is CTM? commit to memory. It should be on your fingertips. Real power generation and then transmission from ith bus is V i E g i x g i sin delta g i minus delta i. Okay. Excitation voltage the terminal voltage, the uh, the reactants and these are the two angles. Since these are constant two voltages, since a reactants is known, so it is directly proportional to delta. There is no V involved in it. Likewise, in QGI you can see there is no delta. Of course, these are approximate equations. Even this is approximate in the sense resistance has been ignored, neglected. So, you can see that Q is totally independent of delta 
and that is why we could make those off diagonal terms 0. So, in if you want to control voltage, you have to control reactive power. That is what I told you last time that is uh, war control S V S. We have done it last time, we have introduced at least last lecture control of war generators, synchronous or static capacitors. What is synchronous capacitor? That is also called dynamic compensator. It is nothing but a synchronous motor running at no load and it does provide you wars and you must have seen in United States of America this is being used for last 50 years and still being used. This uh, there is a book by Taylor uh, reactive power control and management 1982 John Wiley. The total book is exclusively on war control that is voltage control. So, in case somebody wants to do a project and wants to know more about it, they can read that book. The reference is given in our book. What is wrong with that? It is a motor, so it runs. It is not a static device, it is a dynamic device. It needs maintenance, it needs care, you have to handle it with care. But suppose the buses are not necessarily all buses are in city areas, metro areas, they may be in jungles, transmission lines are all over. Now, who is going to go there and see whether it is operating satisfactorily or not, whether there is any insulation failure in synchronous machine, whether there is an excitation problem or whether there is a cooling problem. So, these are the problems yet it has not been written off, it is still being used. In India of course, we do not have it, uh, but overseas outside we definitely use it still. Its comparison is given in chapter 5, you can see the dynamic compensator versus static compensator, what are the comparisons. So, normally we use static capacitors or bank of inductors as I told you last time. Here being a static device, there is nothing to worry about maintenance, nothing to worry about excitation, cooling, any failure. The failure of a static device, that is the reason why transformer efficiency is 98 to 99 percent. This question is always asked in any UPSC interview or any interview and the normally student says with a great hesitation sir 96 percent and I say no still more than he says 97 percent. He is bit hesitant in saying it 99 or 98 because he thought he thinks that this much efficiency is not possible, but transformer does have a very very high efficiency because it is a static device there is no moving part, no friction, no wear and tear of that extent as you will have in a rotating device. That is why many machines books the titles are rotating machines and transformer. Though transformer is also a machine in a way, but they clearly differentiate between the two just because it is a static device. Now, most of the buses are PQ buses. I told you in my load flow lecture, 85 percent PQ, 15 percent PV and 1 slack. But whichever those 15 percent buses are there, they are normally having generators attached to it. Though let me hasten to add, it is not necessary to have a generator attached to a PV bus. PV bus merely says that its P and V are known to you. It can have a bank of capacitor attached to it, so that that keeps the voltage constant or bank of inductors attached to it, because we have to keep voltage constant at a given value, 
that is all is the condition of PV bus. It never says that you have necessarily have to have a generator bus to qualify it as a PV bus. Loosely this bus has several names like slack bus, reference bus, slack bus, swing bus. Similarly, PV bus has three names PV bus, generator bus and voltage control bus. In fact, in some books the fourth bus category is given. For example, in this book I have uh, categorized four buses whereas, in that other book we have only three buses. So, it is up to a expert up to an author to talk about it, bus, but we can by and large group them into one that is a PV bus. So, we have to have a VAR injection if you want to raise the voltage, you know sink, you know and source. If you want to reduce the voltage, then voltage has to be absorbed that I have already talked last time. What I did not talk was the same thing could have been achieved by transformers. So, transformer is a magic magical thing. See the whole of electronics need transformers. No electronic circuit can be complete without the presence of your TV it has a transformer circuit because that 11 kV and so on it has to be step down step up and so on. Transformer is required in instrumentation they are called instrumentation transfer CTs, PTs current transformer potential transformer CVTs and so on they are required in uh, IDDC center as well. They are required in biomedical center because the doctors and patients they what they handle is a very low voltage. They cannot be subjected to 11 kV sort of thing. So, here transformer also plays a role of voltage control. How? The real power can be controlled by shifting the phase of the voltage change in the angle because real power depends on angle that I have been telling you again and again P has a friendship with delta Q has a friendship with V and if you want to change the Q by changing Q you can control the magnitude of voltage. How do you do that? Q can be controlled by changing magnitude. How do you change the magnitude? by T C U L. What is this T C U L? Transformer tap control under load. T is tap. All of you must have taught in your machine course there are taps on the transformer. Where do you keep taps? On a high voltage side H V winding. Why? The control is easy. And secondly, H V winding is always outside, L V winding is around the core and then H V winding. So, anything which is outside it is easy to control. Anything which is inside you have to do lot of jugglery, lot of effort to reach there. Then if you control it becomes very difficult. If you put a fan regulator where the fan is you have to bring some staircase or CD or something and go there, it is running, you have to stop it, then control and then change it. If you remember the olden days when TV used to have a manual voltage stabilizer. So, when you are watching, you have to go there again, get up with a great difficulty because you have settled nicely in sofa, then go tuck, tuck, you know, used to change those manual. I do not know whether you recall. Uh, or you are born with the automatic voltage stabilizer. So, now everybody wants to do everything by remote control, no physical activity. If anything by doing something, if I can lunch here, why should I go to hostel? All the way 1 kilometer long distance, 
stand, ask for lift, somebody gives, somebody doesn't give. In one hour you have to go, come back and so on. You want to have your, room, your, your house open by remote control, the garage open by remote control. All these things are being done in, uh, in our modern society, everything by remote control. Governments are being run by remote control, so, I mean, etc., etc. So, such transformers are called regulating transformer. This is the name gentlemen given like instrumentation transformers, they are called regulation transformer. In bracket, in short RT. Look at this, this is a figure I had drawn, how adding in phase ho boosting voltage is line improves the, raises the voltage and so Q, Q control, if you raise the voltage. Q will also get control. Q depends on V. So, this is the star combination of a transformer. This is another winding of transformer star delta. I think this is star star, right. And then depending on this T, this is T here, tap. Mostly we are interested in controlling P, because the general public does not know what is Q control, but everybody knows about megawatt, everybody knows about watts, everybody knows about energy, kilowatt hour, because you pay for it. Every house gets these two bills definitely, whether they get another third bill or not. One is telephone bill, another is uh, electricity bill. Of course, you may have to pay house rent, you may have to pay so many other things, but this now of course, telephone bill got shifted from landline to cellular phone, if it is postpaid. If it is not postpaid, you have to at least go and buy the card, prepaid card. So, if you want to control P, then you have to use phase shifting transformer which changes the phase without changing the magnitude of it. Because I do not want to change magnitude. The moment I change magnitude, Q will change, unless until your objective function is to change both. But normally, we go in steps. See, if you have two diseases, doctor will first try to attack the one which is more serious. You see? then he will tackle the other one, less serious. Otherwise, if you are trying to tackle both, sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. That is why whenever there is a confusion between sequential or simultaneous, normally we opt for sequential, like FDLF, I told you, because it is easier to tackle one problem at a time. So, you cannot work for your all the four subjects you are taking simultaneously. What do you do? Okay, 8 to 9 this subject, 9 to 10 this subject, 10 to 11. You can't start opening all the four books simultaneously, read one line from here, one line, it will be chaotic, it will be disaster, right. So, V A and dash, the, for this equation you have to see this figure first this is the RT regulating transformer for voltage phase angle control. So, this is V A n and this is output is V A n dash and V A n dash is a changed voltage. This is V A n plus T times V B, T is again a tap and the 1 minus j root 3 T, T is very small V A n is equal to A V A n, this is called A. 
this quantity is replaced by a. Now, a is variable depending on t, t is the only variable 1 and root 3 is the numerals, you cannot change them, t is the tan. So, the small figure I have drawn here which will tell you this t v b c is added, so it becomes v a n dash a times v a n and this is how the angle is shifted once angle is shifted p is shifted either p is reduced or p is increased sin delta means more the angle more the power 90 degree is 1 0 degree is 0 sin 0 is 0 sin 90 is 1 so if you increase the angle slightly you get more power of course by this you can't make 400 megawatt as 500 megawatt otherwise nobody will uh, install power houses they will only put phase shifting transformers and do magic and somehow they will increase by no this is only minor change the fine tuning few megawatts after all transformer is not a generator it cannot generate power by doing this technical or technological jugglery you are able to improve slightly that is all so, do not be under impression that transformer has suddenly become power generator. It only improves slightly. Similarly, their voltage control transformer, the limit is very small. If you want large variation, no choice, you have to go for SVS, flexible transmission, that is facts and so on. phase angle is shifted without change in magnitude. But there is a side effect, you take any medicine there is a side effect, but you, you cannot just be afraid of side effect otherwise you will not be cured, you have got to take medicine, certain medicines you get allergies, certain medicines you get stomach ache, then doctor gives another medicine to take care of that stomach ache. So, here what is the impact of putting transformer in the line? The presence of RT in lines modifies Y bus, Y bus gets modified and since Y bus gets modified and Y bus is a load flow model. So, load flow solution A gets modified, once Y bus is modified the natural corollary is your load flow solution is no longer same which you have obtained. So, this is the price you have to pay, you have to rerun the load flow solution. Why? How does it get modified? Look at these two small figures, ith bus, jth bus. This is the line, line means transmission line. RT regulating transform. Draw the circuit model of this is a one line diagram, this is a circuit diagram. All of you are aware of one line diagram. Whatever book you might have studied, you must have studied one line diagram. Now, what is the circuit diagram? This is a transformer, this is a tap, this is SI. All of you remember the machine, again whichever book you might have studied, Fitzgerald, MGC our book or Bhimra's book, every book told you that input power and output power remain same. That means, transformer operation is power invariant like your symmetrical components. It is again a power invariant. So, S i will remain S i even after the transformer. S i is complex input power coming from i th bus to the network. This is current i i, current gets changed i i dash that is a well known in a transformer you get voltage and currents change in a ratio of turns ratio, some directly, some inversely all these things you know. I have no intention to teach all over again machines which all of you have earlier mastered. 
then this is a this is a line and I am using here a short line model because my point is here not to explain your transmission line models the short line middle line long line middle line can be used by T model pi model the long line can be exact model modified T modified pi and so on all these things you have already studied if you want to brush up your memory, revise your memory, you can see the chapter 5 of this book or any book. Chapter number may change, but the material remains the same. 2 plus 2 will remain 4. Whosoever writes that. This is bus J. So, SJ is a power injected from Jth bus. IJ is a current coming from Jth bus this is a circuit representation this is a one line diagram this is the circuit representation of the same circuit diagram these are the equations I have written keeping that circuit in mind in case you have not drawn that circuit I have to keep it once more here I am looking at this circuit and drawing those, writing those equations. SI input complex power is equal to VI II star, everybody knows about it, which is also equal to VI dash II dash star as I said transformer is a power invariant operation. Now, if I convert this V i dash it is equal to A V i like transformer operation, A is the turns ratio. So, I i becomes equal to A star I i dash, A conjugate star means conjugate. I am sure all of you know what is complex variable. So, I i dash is nothing but A y times A V i minus V j that is your uh, Ohm's law, current is equal to y into v or v is equal to z into i. Since we people do not use z as a model for a load flow studies, we are using y here or i i becomes equal to a star i i dash substitute i i dash from here. So, a dash into a becomes a magnitude whole squared y v i minus a conjugate y v j. Similarly, I can find out i j. You, you can write it down if you want. Again, I am emphasizing here, retreating here, repeating here that y is nothing but a series line admittance. That is a short line model. If it is a pi model, nothing to worry there will be equations will be slightly modified. Now, this is the y bus. What is y bus? i is equal to v y into v. So, collect the, the terms and you get a y bus here. What you are seeing it for the first time? y bus is not symmetrical. This question I have been asking you, maybe I have asked you in the first terminal exam or first minor, whatever you call it that is y bus symmetrical? The answer is normally yes, except when you use phase shifting transformer. Then you can have a look at these two half diagonal terms, they are not quite same, both are minus no problem, both are y no problem, but here it is a, here it is a star. But once it becomes a normal voltage control problem, or Q control problem, then it becomes symmetric. But once you want to control P, then it is a phase shifting transformer and then it is not symmetrical. So, this is the answer to that question which I just told you earlier on that Y bus is symmetric subject to that there is no presence of phase shifting transformer. However, if there is a phase shifting transformer, then it is unsymmetric. This is the answer you should give 
because this question is normally asked. Today we are going to finish this chapter 6, we will start chapter 7. RTs may be placed at both the ends, I have just shown you one end. But if you are more fussy, more careful, you want to improve slightly more, then you can have one RT near sending end, one RT near receiving end. As if you have taken some money from your home when you go for shopping, you also have a credit card with you in case that money is insufficient or you have a ATM card and you can withdraw money from anywhere. So, that is an additional help. So, no, you are not only improving the voltage at the sending end, but also improving at the receiving end. Of course, the analysis becomes slightly more complicated. It is given in the book. In case you want, you can go through it because it is exactly similar. For large variations, we need war control. For small variation, transformer is adequate. I have already told you about this. Up to 20 percent of variation can be achieved by transformer, but if you want to go beyond as is the normal case in India when the voltage goes as low as 220 from 220 to 170 or from 220 to 270, then you have, there is no choice but to have the war control. In India, we have only one place where there is a SVS installed. Do you know where is that place? Anybody? Very good. It is in Kan near Kanpur, Panki and that is the only SVS station in India so far because it involves a lot of money. And when you happen to be in Kanpur, do go and visit this SVS station, static war control, static war system. You can have a trip or whatever, depends on you. Normally, a question is asked, whatever subject you may be doing, whatever topic you may be studying, which is the best load flow method. And it is always controversial whether it is Arjuna award, whether it is a Padma award. Some people who do not get it, they always say there is something wrong with the system. See, whether it is a selection committee, somebody who does not become professor, he says selection committee was biased. Somebody who does not get in admission, he also says, oh, that fellow was sitting, he must have done something. Similarly, here when you answer this question, which load flow method is the best? We have studied Gauss, Gauss Seidel, Newton Raphson, decoupled, fast decoupled. In fact, there is a second order load flow method also, which I have not uh, covered, and uh, that is a slight improvement, but it is not worth the trouble. Instead of Jacobian, you will get a Hessian matrix. That is, a Taylor series is truncated after second order turn. Here in Newton Raphson method, we have truncated Taylor series just after the first order term. There you will take it to second order term, and that much uh, accuracy will yield slight more accurate results in load flow. But it has not found much favor, and so it is only studied in classes or by research scholars and not you really used in practice. Actually, it depends on type and size of system. It is like saying which medicine will help you in solving your problem. Had it been universal, no doctor will find a job. You can just make a manual, cold, action 500. If it is pain, decold or Amrutanjan or Zandu balm, they will help only the transformer, first 20 percent. But if something goes wrong beyond that, you have to visit a doctor and doctors normally ask you your history because each case has to medical science is not that perfect science yet perhaps it will never be why one operation is success why another is not same problem same bypass surgery same whatever 
and one fellow comes back from operation theatre, one fellow does not. So, that is the problem. So, here also it depends on type of a system, size of a system, is it a normal system, is it a ill conditioned system and so on. What type of numbering you have done, that is optimal ordering, what type of uh, controls are there and so on. Mainly it is a compromise. Newton Epson is very accurate. Its uh, convergence is the best quality convergence, but it is complicated. Writing a program, nowadays program writing is not a big deal. There are ready made programs available and you can purchase or get even free. So, that used to be in our days when we used to say programming is nowadays programming is really not required, programs are already there. But still, there are so many other compromises. Do you want speed? Do you want accuracy? Do you want a memory is your problem? Like you go for a purchase of a car, not everybody purchases Mercedes, it may be very the best car in the world. You see your requirement, you see your family size, you see the money you have in your pocket, you see the need and so on. So, you cannot say which is the best car somebody goes for Ascent, somebody goes for Zen, somebody goes for Indica. A taxi driver needs an Indica, Indica is a grand success as far as private taxis are concerned. So, that is a compromise. So, you can never answer this question for definitely that yes, hereafter this is the best method. So, let us not study other methods. When you know which is the best method under all circumstances, why study other methods at all, but no. Like optimization technique, I do not know whether you have studied optimization techniques or not. Uh, there is a linear programming, there is a quadratic programming, there is a dynamic programming, there is a maximum principle, there is a you know uh, or what you call uh, so many other methods. If you study operation research and uh, this uh, optimization techniques, it depends on the problem it depends on why you want to apply it, it depends on what is your objective function. So, you cannot say for sure that this is the best optimization technique for all time to come or all problems to solve, same answer you can give it here. I think with this we finish chapter 6 and now you can solve the problems, there are additional problems, there are solved problems, there are unsolved problems but answers are given there at the end of the book. Hopefully, all of them are correct. If there are something wrong, you can always point it out to me. Now, we start chapter 7 and that is on optimal system operation. As you have seen yourself in load flow, you change those specified variables, you get a different load flow solution. It is a function of those values which you have selected by experience by whatever means. So, you can get thousands of solutions, load flow solutions by permutation, combination, there are 100 bus system, 1000 bus system, whole India if you solve there is a 1000 bus, NREB, northern region you solve some 350 buses are there. So, you can have innumerable alternative solutions available, but a customer is not interested in those 1000 solutions he wants the best solution. Now, we have come back to the same question, what is the best? Each student studies different subjects for different times, because each student's objective function is different. Somebody's objective function is to get a gold medal, 10 pointer. Now, the IIT Delhi has started an award for 10 pointer. One uh, girl student got this convocation, physics department. 
uh, CGPA 10. Nowadays getting CGPA 10 is a tough job because of this A minus, A, B minus, B, C minus, C. Earlier days when there were no A minus, no B minus, people used to get A. Now if there is a doubt, the teacher gives A minus. A minus means 9, that is all, 9 to your 10 CGPA is gone. The moment you get one A minus in the whole program, you cannot be 10 pointer. So what is best for another person need not be best for everybody. Somebody's objective function is to remain in the system. There is some CGPA call that you know beyond which if you go below that you are out of the main gate because nowadays only cars and can come only from main gate can go also from main gate. So similarly those lower CG people can also go from out or there are whatever rules are there. Somebody's objective function is to get okay, 8 CGP is good, I also work in dramatist, I am a player, I am an all rounder. So I have to divide my time in various activities, that is what I want. Some are poor persons like in US etc, they do jobs, small little jobs, babysitting, and, uh, garage or they give watering to the lawns and get dollars. Naturally, there are 24 hours in a day. You can't do everything. You have to decide. Like a teacher has to decide, should he write books, should he guide PhD thesis, Amtech thesis, write papers, do consultancies, do sponsor project, go and give lectures outside. Of course, minimum thing you have to do that is teaching in the institute. Now, should you become warden or not? That is not a compulsory. It is up to your wish. Should I be in uh, rendezvous in charge like Viraj Dattai's bar president or whatever? Choice is yours. There are so many things to do. What you want to do is there is no prescription. So everybody decides his or her course of action in life. Some of you want to go for IAS, some want to do engineering services, some want to go abroad and so on. So this out of this thousand load flow solution, I want one which is called optimal load flow. The first paper in this topic came by Domel and Tinney. These are the two persons who wrote this paper in 1967. I have given their reference in my book. Those of you who want to read this paper, you are most welcome. Of course, I will be covering here in the class. That gives you one particular load flow, which is the best load flow. Again, best decided on what? Which is the best way to reach New Delhi station? There is a taxi, cab. If you are more sophisticated public school student, you will call it a cab. Or if you are a rural taxi. But it takes 200 rupees. But then your suit will remain the way it is. You are not worried about the rains. You are not worried about the heat outside if it is an air conditioned cab, cool cab as they call it in Bombay. Here also now all indicas are air conditioned. So you are immune to the atmospheric conditions, whether it is 5 degree centigrade or 45 degree centigrade. You are not bothered. There is a heating inside the car. There is a cooling inside, but you have to pay 200 rupees. But you will look fresh at the New Delhi station, Ajmeri Gate or Parganj, whichever side you are going. If you are not having 200 rupees, your ticket may be to your place may be 55 rupees, why pay 200 for going? You may go for auto, rather than you go in auto. But if there is a rain, heavy rains, raining cats and dogs, you get drenched, your bag will get uh, drenched but then you go straight no he will not take anybody else you are the exclusive owner of that vehicle but you pay around 70 rupees 60 rupees depending on your bargaining power or your knowledge of the person who always stands in front of the hostel gate but if you don't want to spend even 55 rupees or 70 rupees there is 620 or 650 you go there stand 
10 rupees, you are in New Delhi station. If you are lucky, you get a seat. If you are not lucky, you get seat after some time or you never get, but you still go all the same. But if you are really most unlucky, your pocket, <laughs> big pocket <laughs> may happen. So, but still you reach New Delhi station. You even do not want to give the 10 rupees. Can you go and stand near the red light. Where are you going? Can I come? Okay, come. So, you two, three installments you reach New Delhi station. If you start one and a half hour early. So, there are several ways. Now, what is best? It is left to the perception of an individual. Or somebody that cab is best, or somebody that auto is best, because bus will stop at several places, merrily, merrily. So you have to also stop at that time. You need not see your watch at that time. Oh, train may come and go, because you have to start sufficiently early. This is optimization. It depends upon your perception. What is the best? So what do you want? What for this load flow is? Is it for planning purposes? It is for operation purposes. Is your objective function cost? Is your objective function pollution? Is your objective function loss minimization? Is your objective function voltage control or anything else? So, you are guided by these objective functions and then you decide upon a method. Now, ladies, uh, no ladies, only gentlemen. So, gentlemen, we will continue next time this story of optimal system operation.